Well, Shanda, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm really excited to jump in to setting student, student expectations with you. Um, Eric told me when I asked, kind of picked his brain about what topics I could discuss with you, we both agreed that we, everyone should always be taught by Shanda Hall. Like we know this because no, we exactly like everyone should be taught by Shanda Hall. And so um, I'm excited to dive in because Eric said that you are a pro at setting expectations for students. So I'm excited to, excited to pick your brain about these questions. Well, thanks. That's kind. <laughs> yeah. Um, my first question I wanted to ask, uh, I guess to begin, what is the difference between a learning objective and a student expectation? And why do you think that 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 is significant to differentiate? Mm -hmm. So your learning objective goes back to what it is you need the students to do. Um, of course, everything being tied to the standards, and this is old school, I kind of feel like I'm a college professor here for a second, but um, old school, start with the end in mind. What do you want to get to? What is the end goal? What is the end, not necessarily end product, but what is the end goal for learning? The skill that they want to um, be able to do by the time your project is done. And so you set that objective and a lot of times it's the, there's a big objective for like the unit or you might be working on that same objective for eight straight school days, but it's the baby steps along the way. And so when we talk about how are we going to get to that overall objective, there might be three or four small ones you have to do along the way to get to the big one. So that's just education 101. We, we know that any teacher knows those things. Um, but the student expectation part is the part where the art of teaching comes in. And that is how you convince the kids that what they're doing is super important, um, kind of the why behind it because they don't always see that big picture. They're just like, mm -hmm. oh, she's making me do this or I have to do this. Whereas if we switch that mindset to look what you get to do to build up to the next thing you get to do. And by the time you do these pieces, look at the skill you just accomplished or look at the, the new knowledge that you've gained that you can put to work. And again, we all know the motivational part of, of where we're at with kids is why. If you can give them a why, they are gonna wrap their hands and hearts around whatever you're asking them to do if they feel like it matters and that it has value and it's not busy work. We're the same way as adults. Don't give me silly things to keep me busy. Mm -hmm. You know, tell me why, why are we doing this? And then it's easier to make that happen. Um, a lot of what we talk about is the perspective of, I'm having you do this now so that mm -hmm. like my students are middle school. So when you get to high school, this is why. Or I, I want you to know how to do this now. So when you go to a job interview, you're going to get hired because you know how to do X, Y, and Z and other people don't, um, or how fun it's going to be when you get ready to get into college and you can tell your professor, oh, I've been doing this since I was 12 yes. and they're going to question you. And then you have proof in your digital portfolio of, uh, yeah, yes, I was here. It is. So setting that student expectation of the why and the how, and then this is just how we do things. Um, a lot of it's procedures. And so if I set the procedure of this is how we upload, this is how we name, this is where we save things, whether it's yearbook digital media or digital media class, having a common language eliminates a lot of the problems we have. And this is kind of on to another part of the questions that we have here, but it also no, gives, them, you know, empowering the kids, empowering them to say, yes, you can. And if you're not sure, it's not just the teacher in the room. You've got 14 other experts sitting beside you. Let those experts help you just because you can't remember it. Ask them, you know, yeah. and um, that expectation of knowing that they themselves are experts in different parts is the part that that goes super super well so it's significant that we have procedures and those expectations set up because it makes us getting to that objective so much smoother yeah so much smoother they they see a pathway and they know why that, they, yes that's all, yes <laughs> thank you so much um my next question is when teaching a new lesson, how do you, how do you define your learning 
objectives for your students? And then kind of going off of what you said earlier, how do you make it exciting and inspiring to them? Yeah, so this just goes back to, and literally it's part of what my school does. So we will have the objectives up on the board. And that way I can tell them, this is what you're reaching for. So I use the um, Nebraska CTE standards and yes, they're the high school standards, but um, you know, the CIS HS at 17.6, it's the one I use all the time. And that's performing production tasks. And mm -hmm. so that one will stay up and I'm like, okay, so as our production tasks right now, we are doing a storyboard to get ready for X, Y, and Z. So they kind of see that process of building toward a project or whatever it is. And I just, I blatantly say it out loud. This is what we're working for. Now, to be honest, and my administrators may or may not see this, but do I say it every day? Do I point to it four times a class period like we're supposed to? Uh, no, I do not at all. Um, <laughs> honestly, I, do, I, know, yeah. I do a good job at the beginning of a unit to say, hey, this is what we're working toward. And I might remember three days later to point to it again on the board and say, hey, remember, this is what we're doing. Um, but we kind of get in here and we're in work mode. You know, this is a working yeah working studio. Oh, so I don't do the best job of that. Not going to tell lies here. Um, but part of it is just the agenda each day where you come in, you say, okay, yesterday, this is what we did. And we're going to continue and level that up today. And I might teach a little mini lesson for seven, eight minutes. And now we're going to practice the skill. We're going to put it into action. So part of the building, the excitement of it is absolutely where, again, you tell the why and then you level up the next thing. I think of it like video games. I used to get super stoked playing Mario Kart back in the day or Super Mario Brothers if I got to go to the next level and squish the mushroom and all this. Um, when I knew what was next and then I got to put that into practice immediately, it also gave me a chance to get feedback right away. And I think that is a super important part of the feedback that we've talked about multiple times is getting immediate feedback over a skill that I'm working on now, not nine mm -hmm. days later when I turn in a project, it's got to be that, you know, the, the feedback along the way. Yeah. So I'm not a teacher who sits at my desk um, while the kids are doing whatever they're doing. I'm bouncing around student to student or group to group to say, okay, what are you doing? And even if they don't think they need feedback, they're going to get it from me anyway. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm not a bakery. I don't sugarcoat. They're going to get it. <laughs> they're going to get it. Um, you know, in a positive way about, okay, I love what you're doing here. What are three things you might want to think about? Or here's two suggestions and you pick and choose if you want to use either one of them or don't at all. You know, I'm just another opinion. Um, or I'll say something you might want to consider is, I say that a lot, or, you know, this is going in a certain direction. Let's look at our rubric. Let's go back to that rubric and let's go back to, you're kind of going off on a tangent, which I love the creativity, but can we say that for a different thing for this particular project? I need you to stay within the rails of, of this and this not over here. Um, so some of that matters as well. You know, when, when we're talking about to incite, I don't know, some type of a, this is fun, you know, keep it fun. Yeah. I don't want to crush creativity. Um, mm -hmm. you kind of give guidelines, but I hate guidelines <laughs> to be honest. You know, <laughs> Um, because I think that if I tell them this is my expectation and they have 17 ideas that are better than what I came up with, that there's a, there's a fine line and a balance with that too. Yeah. So switching it up, you know, definitely, um, solid education background says for a middle school student, even high school, you do nothing longer than 10 minutes. You've got seven to 10 minutes before you switch it up. So if you're lecturing seven to 10 minutes, go to an activity. So Again, it's kind of feels like a education 101, but that's, that's what it is, you know? So keep it, it fun. Sounds, it sounds like um, just kind of what I, what I'm picking out on too, is just like how important it is to be transparent with your students when you are setting expectations and just kind of being like, sometimes we just have to, we have to do this because this is, you know, this is the state standard or this is, you know, sometimes it's, Unfortunately, you can't control everything that's put upon you as a teacher. Um, I wish you, I wish we could that way because, you know, teachers are incredible humans. I wish I could take any bare load off their shoulders. Uh, but um, yeah, it, I, I talk more about like how 
the power of being transparent and communicating that with your students. Right. So just like you said, sometimes we have tasks we have to do. So if, Mm -hmm. um, when you're at work or if you're working for an advertising agency, you know, let's think forward to career wise. Now let's, you know, think past, yeah. again, I keep having to say I teach middle school, but I think it's important for them <laughs> to put that dream idea up there of when you're 22 and you have finished college or you've been working for four years because you're so good. Now you don't need to do the college route. There's that too. Um, but when we we were fast forwarding, we're looking at those types of things to be super transparent. I'll say, these are skills you must have. Mm -hmm. If you, it's anything, if you can't look someone in the eye and shake their hand with a firm handshake and be well-spoken, your message is going to be lost because you're not getting through the door. So when they realize that some of the things we're working on, you know, we just did a, the kids snippets where, um, there's little kids that get their voices get recorded and the adults act it out and lip sync to it. I've shown this for years and <laughs> did that in class and it's super fun. And they're like, why are we doing this? And I said, what if you decide you want to be a voiceover actor or actress, or, I mean, we're doing the opposite of that, or just to have another skill of reading facial expressions was a lot of it is it's not digital media, but it's communication. It's how you get your message across and how something is received simply by what your face is saying. And so they were really seeing some of the kids who had very straight faces and it was supposed to be hilarious. And I said, you don't look funny. You look, it's too straight lace. So raise your eyebrows, you know, some of these skills, the soft skills that we don't see Mm -hmm. because heads are buried in computers. Like I love the top of your forehead. It's super cute. Um, But I'm tired of seeing that. So some of those soft skills and, and being very transparent about if I were your future boss, you would or not get hired based upon something I just saw in class. Mm-hmm. Um, you didn't cite your resource. You stole that music. Prove to me you didn't. Mm-hmm. That's not going to fly in a business setting if, if you're not using copyright free music. Um, the photo that you have, or did you use AI to create it or, you know, the whole AI discussions and a lot mm-hmm. of that that's happening, like, super mega fast right now. Um, but all of those different types of things is how do you value yourself and your work and make sure your work is of the highest quality. So you are getting the job and you are getting the opportunity to make that presentation and you are getting the Mm -hmm. opportunity to level up and go in from the bosses or sell your work or whatever it is. Um, you have to be absolutely transparent with the why and the, how it works. I'm asked to do lots of things I don't want to do. So do those first, you know, get done. Um, (laughs) But being that creative communicator, being um, on the global world, I'm trying to think bigger, you know, about the whys and the hows of what we're doing. Yeah, Um, that that transcends your classroom, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I keep using the word transparent, but you absolutely have to tell them what's going on. Plus, Come on, everybody knows teenagers are not stupid. They read you right away. You can try to tell them you might be the best <laughs> on the planet. They will see right through that. So don't even <laughs> that person. Just be straight with them. And then again, that goes back to expectations and classroom mm-hmm. management things. Um, so when things do happen because you have a relationship where they know you're a straight shooter, it goes a long ways. You know, I get a lot more out of kids when they know I'm not giving them busy work. And there's a reason behind it. I'm trying to help them. Absolutely. That was, yes. Thank you. Um, My next question was, what is the best way that you found to set expectations for your digital media students? I keep feeling like I'm repeating myself a little bit here because it's good. Um, (laughs) No, I'm sorry. (laughs) They all kind of bleed into each other. So it's, it's good with that. The telling them the why and that it helps things to run way more smoothly when I'm setting those expectations and the very best way is just to come out and say it. Um, This is what we need to do. This is why we need to do it. And this is how we're going to do it. And I even just say, y'all, please just trust me on this one. I've done this for a a hot Mm -hmm. minute here. Um, That when I ask you to do something or save something in a specific way or in a specific order, it's not because it has to be Mrs. Hall's way. It has Mm -hmm. to be with efficiency. 
and to make ease of use for other people. And so we're getting ready to go here into wrestling season and basketball season. And when I tell them, this is how we keep stats. This is how we set up every time. This is how we welcome in an audience when we're doing play by play. This is why certain camera shots are done a certain way. And I've trained you how here's what it looks like if you don't. And then I show them examples of just atrocious things I've seen and have recorded. And then what we've done in the past and instantaneously, there's no convincing anymore. You know, <laughs> it's just like, Oh, you know, there's a reason. And I'm like, Again, if you tell them the why and the reason, they get it. Um, or again, as far as to set those expectations, um, just kind of, and this sounds so corny. My, my kids, <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> it's so corny. Um, be nice. <laughs> just yeah. be nice. Um, is it nice for you to cause issues for the editors? Is it nice for you to not have your work in for a deadline? Is it nice for you to have extra B-roll shots? No matter what it is we're doing, what is the nicest way that you can help out the people you work with, your colleagues, mm -hmm. um, how you treat each other? And are you being nice to yourself to push yourself to a deadline because you procrastinated? That's not being nice to yourself. Yeah. So it sounds ridiculous when I say it out loud, but <laughs> that is honestly the best way that I've set that up is be nice to yourself, be nice to others. Yeah. And when you put it in a frame of kindness and get away from this whole thing of responsibility all the time, because they're sick and tired of hearing that, mm, that. it gets a lot further. Yeah. It gets a lot further. Just to, I, nice. I feel like there are some probably workplaces too that could benefit from just implementing kindness rather than the expectations. Yeah. Um, have you ever had a lesson or activity where you kind of wish you changed either the learning objectives or the student expectations while you were going through it? And kind of what does that look, what advice would you give to teachers when they kind of, what if they're in the middle of a lesson and want to pivot? Like, what advice would you give? Would you tell them to pivot? Just go for it? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, the best teachers have done things I don't want to use the word incorrectly, have had to do things more than once or twice the wrong way um, to find out better ways, especially yeah. this one, um, <laughs> for sure. Pivot, do it. We can be halfway through. The biggest downfalls I've had is trying to do too much. I have these mm. grand ideas and then I'm like, oh, that's going to take a few more days. Um, one of my mm. favorite lessons, I'm not doing it this year because I'm kind of burnt out on it, honestly. This is the pivot part. Um, was the lesson I've talked about multiple times before with the door project where they do a horror movie that we all have the same prescription of the oh. sound. Oh my gosh, what's that? And then the stupid actor goes toward the sound and who's there, you know, that whole thing. Um, it's over and over and over the same thing, but I was trying to do too much where I didn't, you know, put the focus enough on audio or the kids mm -hmm. were so enthralled with all of the sound effects that they forgot the storytelling side and they were getting really just kind of cruddy B-roll shots. Um, they weren't thinking storyline, beginning, middle, end. They were just so big on sound effects, sound effects, sound effects, and audio, audio, and getting the screams and the creaking door and those things that by the time it was all said and done, I was having them do too much. You know, mm -hmm. even a one minute little story project was too much for what we were trying to do. And if I had broken that down into, sorry, but if I had broken that down into some simpler stories or into some simpler objectives and do one objective at a time, rather than production tasks, we go down even simpler, yeah. um, one skill at a time where maybe I could mm -hmm. have provided them with the audio that they had to use. And then they shot the B-roll or I provided them with the footage and then they had to add the audio mm -hmm. instead of having them do everything. Um, or I provide them with both and then they have to be the narrator. So that they're honestly working on the storytelling aspect of what we're doing. Um, the same thing with news stories. If I provide the footage and they have to edit the footage together rather than go shoot the footage, it eliminates that um, to start with. And even those who've been doing it for a while, sometimes they get so caught up on getting all the footage, they forget the story. What's the story yeah. about? You know, we're opening basketball and wrestling season right now. What are the stories you should be focusing on right now? You know, mm -hmm. and not get caught year after year on the same aspect 
um, of asking the coach, what are your expectations this season? Well, to win, it's the same thing every year. So <laughs> what else? how many preseason practices of people at practice shooting layups are you possibly going to show again? Like as a teacher, we get tired of seeing it over and over. What, what can the kids do to be creative and to freshen that up? Mm-hmm. You know, what else can you show? You know, what else can you do? I don't need to see any more shoes squeaking on the floor. I'm done with that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that's the part of being able to pivot halfway through, no matter what it is, and saying, yeah, go for it. And kids have the best ideas if we're just, as yeah. teachers, stop and let them just let listen. And sometimes they're completely stupid. Let's, let's be honest. And you're like, uh, you know, that's something to think about. Maybe not this time, you know, <laughs> but there's also been some genius moments in there. And I'm like, oh, let me think about that for a minute. And that minute literally might be, let me think about that for 10 seconds. Cause we're doing that idea, you know, and then let's build off of that and brainstorm and stop in the middle or they have a question I hadn't considered with something. So yeah, go for it. The only way you're going to get a reward is risk a little bit of something and why not yeah. show the kids it's okay to fail or it's okay to try something different. And if it worked out awesome, if it didn't, and we learned something, didn't we don't do it that way. So I think it's good to be vulnerable in front of the kids. I really do. Yeah. Absolutely. Try something different. Yeah. And honestly, like, I was just thinking of like, just because you pivot or change, you know, the direction of a project or a lesson doesn't mean that you fail. It just means that you're, you know, kind of adapting to what your students want and their needs. Absolutely. Absolutely. My next question is, if students, well, not if, I guess I should say when students fall short of expectations, how do you go about reconcile, reconciling that? And like, what advice would you give to teachers who kind of run into that same challenge? This is where the feedback part comes in really, really. Mm-hmm. Important. You have given feedback along the way it really diminishes the chances of something being an out and out disaster, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And when I have had projects with kids or just situations with kids where things did not go well, usually it was me who failed to be very honest. It was me not giving timely feedback Mm -hmm. or I wasn't necessarily clear enough. Now there's going to be kids who will go rogue no matter what you can give them all the wonderful (laughs) very precise directions, you know, that this needs to be 29 seconds because that's industry standard. And they're going to come with a project that's 37. And you're like, what did you not get? Um, (laughs) You know, and it's the 18th time we've done it. That's going to happen. Um, But a lot of it is the feedback along the way. And Mm -hmm. I've tried to keep, um, and I show different projects. If it's something we've done before, as an example, without it being too prescribed necessarily. So when we do a hype video every year, that's kind of one of our Mm -hmm. end of the semester things is because it brings so many different skills together. So we do some hype videos. So we'll watch some college ones that are pretty well done professionally. And you're like, wow, we don't, can't do that because we don't have X, Y, and Z, but what could we do? Mm -hmm. And then I'll show them some examples of some really, really bad ones. Like when I first started doing this like eight, nine years ago, there were some pretty <laughs> bad ones and I keep the kids names off of them. And those kids have graduated now and they still have their little kid voices. So people can't even tell who they are if they're not on camera. <laughs> and They'll look at those and be like, Oh, and I'm like, and that's not what we're going to do. Let's compare that one to our rubric. And I kind of go back to that rubric all the time. Yeah. But the other part that you said, how do I reconcile it? And this is huge. Yeah. I let them redo it. I let them fix it. You know, I understand if you crash a car, you don't get a brand new car. Like I, I get that <laughs> aspect. And that's my mindset too. Like, nah, you got to do it right the first time. Like, don't, don't keep waiting for me. You're not going to do it five times. And I'm not going to let you redo every project, but for the most part, if it is not up to my standard, I will just look at them and I'm said, I'm sorry, I can't accept that. Mm-hmm. And they'll kind of give me a weird look. And I'm like, that's not how we do things in this classroom. And you know that. You know, let's, mm-hmm. let's get it to the right. You know, when we've got our standards, um, we're a Marzano school. So we have four, three, two, one on a scale. Mm-hmm. 
And I'll even say two is the bare minimum. You did the project, but what else could you do? What else could mm-hmm. you do? Three is kind of where you got to be. And, yeah. um, you know, the adage of there's ordinary and how do you get to extraordinary is a little extra. Well, what's a little extra you can do, you know? Yeah. And if you can't think of anything, here are three ideas that can help you level up. Um, if you can hand this in by tomorrow night at eight o'clock, your, your grade will improve. And it's not about grade, but your project will be at the right place where it needs to be. This is just not acceptable work, you know, and how, a little bit of pride in their work, you know? Yeah. How do you, how do you, how do you balance? I know that you work with middle schoolers, so it might be even more tricky than high schoolers, but how do you balance the kind of the, the toughness that you have to give students, but do it in a way that inspires them or motivates them to do better? instead of kind of falling within themselves because of that critique. Right. Um, a lot of it is how it's presented. Mm-hmm. It really is. Um, Cause I will. You're incredible say, at that. I just want to yes. say you're incredible at <laughs> well, giving critique. Um, it is. It's the words you use. If I'm not doing something well, no matter what it is in life, if you walk up and say, you know, that, that sucks or whatever, that's not going to work. And even if someone says to me, Shanda, you know, could you do better? and I've given it everything I can, then we have the conversation with the kids that they have to be brave enough. And I do use the word brave to tell me, you know, like Mrs. Hall, that is the best I can do right now. And I'm like, cool. Yep. If you are giving me, if on today, you can only give me 60% of yourself, well then give me all of that 60%. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow you can give me 95%. I'm great with that, but have a little bit of self-awareness mm-hmm. to say, is that is that the best you can do? Or is there something you can do to make it a little bit better and ask them, put it back on them. What can you do maybe make it a little bit better? And if it is, it's all I got today. Okay. All right. Accept it. You know, there's, there's things I've done that making supper, <laughs> you know, there's <laughs> days that I'm like, yeah, I'm going to cook up a storm and dirty up every pot and pan in this kitchen. And it's going to be amazing. <laughs> and then there's days you're getting SpaghettiOs people. And that's all I can do. <laughs> I'm opening the can. You got it. Um, but I think how it's presented with a critique and another one I've used a lot is how proud are you of that? And if they're, mm-hmm. if they can, the word proud is a big one. You know, if you can say, yeah, I'm yeah. proud of my work. And I'm like, okay. And usually I'll start with that rather than say, can you make it better? Um, I want their self-reflection of where they think they are. Mm-hmm. And a rubric is great for that. Um, We've used one and it's somewhere around here where there's a, just a burger. And then there's like a cheeseburger with like lettuce and ketchup. And then there's the burger with the, you know, the diet Sprite and the French fries and all that stuff, you know? And I'm like, right now I said, how are you feeling on the menu? And they're like, I'm a burger with cheese. I don't know if I'm going to get lettuce and ketchup on there. And I'm like, okay. And so it's funny to listen to them self-assess and based upon what they say, that's how I know then how to proceed, Mm. you know? honestly with that one to encourage the level up. And the funny thing is, is after about the first two or three projects. So I would say mid September, they know, they know where they're at and they'll see. And a lot of the kids will watch the projects in class and do self critiques where they offer suggestions to each other. Something you might want to consider is, or have you thought about is, Mm -hmm. and then I'll say, okay, if you want to go back and follow any of those critiques from your classmates or things that I've offered up or things that you now see on your own, you're welcome to now fix it. And I do that the day before the deadline. And if you don't want to, it's already in Google classroom, leave it. If you want to go and level anything up, I'm grading Mm -hmm. them tomorrow night at eight o'clock and it's their option. So that's yeah, so real too, because I even in college, like I had, I you know compiled a writing portfolio all semester, and they're like, my like none of the project projects had soft deadlines, but my the real deadline was the end of the semester. That was your whole portfolio had to be done, and like right. that's so real, like because yeah, we're it takes a lot of drafts to make something really really great. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay for them to see, Hey, I thought I did my best, but now I can see, Oh, I can do a little bit better. I can do a little bit more or, Oh, Hey, uh, did you just see Maria's project? Because that was awesome. And I could add that to mine because it's not hard to know how to do it, you know, or I'll go ask her how she did that. You know, how did she put in, did she use green screen or what did she do? Or, 
where did, how did she make her audio be so balanced? Because my voice was too soft and my music was too loud. I'm not mm-hmm. sure how to get that audio balanced correctly, but you know, I noticed Gustavo's was awesome. So I'm like, yeah, go ask Gustavo. Like he's awesome with that. Um, so again, continuing to reiterate the fact of the collaborative nature of the class. Yeah. Just what yes. we do. And that's real. That's real world. Oh, if absolutely. You don't know, ask and get better. <laughs> um, the next question is, I always kind of come back to like digital media and content creation all can fall under the umbrella of art. And so because it is art, like learning objectives and expectations can be, it's difficult because art is so subjective. How do you go about navigating that? And what advice would you give to teachers? To keep that first and foremost, (laughs) Um, that everybody has a different way of seeing the same objective or even the same project and to allow Mm. that to happen through that student's own lens. So Mm. part of it for me is before I ever put a quote grade on anything, I will go through and watch all 45 projects at one Mm -hmm. time and it takes time. I mean, I get it. Um, But again, that's when the feedback part happens. I've been watching this all along through their creation process. Rarely, very, very rarely do I get to the part where I'm grading and I haven't seen 80% of that project eight times, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. It depends on your class sizes, obviously, but when I'm in here with 15 kids at a time, you know, you you get to see what they're doing. Um, But I'll watch all 45 projects. So I kind of get a gist of, where they're all coming from and kind of what I say, the highs and the lows, the ones who just went way above and beyond and did all sorts of extras versus the ones who were the bare minimum. And then also who saw something differently than maybe what I expected, who surprised me type of thing. Yeah. But, um, I let it go. That's, that's part of where they're at and who they are and what they're seeing. Now, obviously there's going to, again, as I said at the very beginning, there's going to be parameters. If we're supposed to be doing um, a how-to video and they're having an alien shootout scene in the parking lot with green screen, I'm like, no, 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 that has nothing, you know, like, come on, bring it back. (laughs) Um, But if they want to do a how-to video, you know, of how to make lasagna and I have a different view in my mind and they have a different view of how they're doing it, those Mm -hmm. are some of the best happy surprises where suddenly I have new project ideas for the next semester because of something somebody did. Um, and they weren't my ideas. It was that student who did it, but no, encourage that. My goodness, we do not need a bunch of robots in the world. Let's please have some uniqueness. <laughs> and, let, and like you said, let it be art and let them know that they're valued for what they think. And I think that's, mm. we say this over and over, but those soft skills, the social emotional learning of students, this is a creative outlet. That's what digital media is, is, you're going to have those future jobs, you know, in advertising or whatever, whatever realm you take. And that's exactly what people want is something new and interesting and different. And if you keep prescribing where it has to be the same, they're never going to get any better at anything because it's, well, I had to do it Mrs. Hall's way. No, please don't. This is a starting point. This is the, the launch pad. You know, you take it where you want to go from here. So, nope, I absolutely it is very subjective. Um, and if a student also, and this goes across the thing, can cite evidence or give me a reason why, again, skills for the future to negotiate, yeah. you know, I, I know that we're supposed to be graded this way, but I didn't want to focus on that for this project. And I've had kids say that to me, you know, that I know we were supposed to do this, but this is how I wanted to do it. And I had to step back and say, okay, that I'm going to grade them on that. You know, if yeah. they're brave enough and, and have enough wherewithal as a seventh grader to come and say that I think my way was better than your way, then I'm going to give that to them, you know, but they may have to walk me through why they think they deserve a 97 on a project, even though they didn't meet two of the criteria of the nine criteria I wanted. Okay. Mm-hmm. Tell me why, tell me why. And again, negotiation skills, Um, people skills. There's so many entrepreneurial type of ideas that please think outside the box, (laughs) please. (laughs) And if not in this class, where? Yeah. 
how do you instill that in your students of just giving them, yeah, just giving them the, I feel like, unfortunately, in so many classrooms that I have been in, I never, sometimes you don't get that authority as a student to be able to negotiate with a teacher. How do you make your classroom an environment that is just, you know, kind of just a, like a space where students can create and it, it may not fit the learning objectives, but that's still, if you're doing the right thing, that still counts. Well, the thing is, is it does fit the learning objectives. You know? <laughs> sure. Yes, it's true. it still does. It's um, if we're doing production tasks and we're supposed to be doing heavy stuff as far as um, B-roll, like I'm, th- I'm just thinking early, early back in September and we are doing angles and we are doing um, depth of field and things like that. And I have a student who was so big on the audio and the sound effects that the very basics were there. I mean, there was wide and medium and close up and there was some high angle and low angle and some neutral, and it was pretty boring to look at, but the sound effects were amazing with what he was doing. Every single time we went to a different one, he had a cha-ching and, you know, near home and all these different things (laughs) happening. And it was still production task. He just yeah. added his own twist on it. And so to praise him in front of the class, oh, yes, you know, and even privately, some of the kids don't want to be praised in front of the class and they took a risk. And if I don't praise that risk, it tells everybody else a risk wasn't okay. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. even if it's completely off the rails, as long as the basics were met, we're fine but I'm going to praise that all day long. Like, oh, dang, look what you just did. I wasn't expecting that. That's pretty cool. Um, Even if it's not an entire, in front of the whole class, even if it's in a small group, and again, it's the feedback along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Allow for it. And if I see something that's extraordinary, I'll even say, so it's not always coming from me. Okay. As we're doing critiques here, class, turn to the, your elbow partners and tell them what are two things you saw that you were like, Hey, that was cool. And again, then it affirms from their classmates, which as we all know, if your classmates are affirming you, it doesn't matter what the teacher says. Yeah. (laughs) She said it was cool. He said it was cool. Um, And, and this is the little sneaky part that we do as teachers. I will go to some of my best and brightest students and ahead of time, because I will have watched the videos ahead of time before we do class critiques. And I, I will kind of and they know they're my secret spy agents here. And I will say to a couple of them, hey, when so-and-so's projects pops up, can you please give me a, or give them a nice critique or good feedback about their audio? And you're going to see why, but I need it to come from you. Yeah. I, I plan it. I absolutely, I've done that for a long time. We know that with some of our students who are less confident, who may be a student with some special needs, or especially in my situation, some students who maybe have some English language learning situations mm-hmm. happening, that they also, it can't come from me all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's not anything that's unwarranted or unearned. I'm not giving fake right. feedback that's positive. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. I'm talking when I see somebody who's done something very well. I will go to a couple of those kids who I know how to be a little bit more tactful about it. And when they compliment, that goes a million miles, you know? So there's little sneaky teacher tricks that we know that we do too. But again, it's not (laughs) unwarranted, you know, type of, of positive feedback from their classmates. I just want to make sure it's not coming from me all the time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my last question is, I was kind of sitting here thinking about uh, preparing for this, and um, I thought about how in digital media class and content creation, it it really can be a unique experience because there are times where creativity can transcend the learning, and not that creativity and learning are mutually exclusive. Um, but how do you how do you strike that balance between, you know? It, focusing on making sure students gain the rights, obviously the skills that they need, but also fostering, you know, that, that, that creativity. Okay. This is awesome. (laughs) So we learn by being creative. If I want to figure out how to do something, (laughs) Um, if I want to figure out how to do something, it's because I have a curious creative mind. 
And as a result of wanting to know more, I just created my own learning and not teacher directed learning. So I learned more teaching digital media than I have the prior 20 years when I taught English and history and I was a fifth grade teacher when I went through college and all those things. Um, that because the digital media makes you be creative and because we need different ways to look at the world and look at what's out there. Um, creativity learn leads to more learning. It just yeah. level up, level up, level up. I don't, I don't know how to do it. Um, you know, luckily we live in a time now, especially the kids do to where it can be hop on Khan Academy, hop on Google, figure out how to do something, ask the people beside me. Um, or if I can't find it, figure it out on my own, mm -hmm. you know, or just the, the whole thing of try, fail, try again, fail, try again, fail the way that worked, you know, um, <laughs> that's that creativity side coming in over and over and over, which is great, you know, to allow us and the kids, again, it, it goes back to everything that we've kind of talked about today. And even in some previous videos that we've done is the objectives and the guidelines and the learning targets are there as a place to try to get to how we get there is where the learning happens, Yeah, you know, and the personal spin, the personal creativity on that, it's still getting to that end result, but, but it's allowing kids to say that there's more than one way to get there. You know, yeah. um, we can say, we're all going to make whatever, you know, <laughs> we're all going to bake a cake. Um, that can take 15,000 different turns as to ingredients and how you get there and what you do. But at the end, if we got a KK, we were successful, you know, mm -hmm. and there's got to be room, especially now with education to let kids see that it's okay to have some things not turn out so great so that the next things can turn out very, yeah. very well and, mm -hmm. and learn from the people around you. So yeah, just there's not really a balance. It's just one leads to the other, which leads to the next, which yeah. leads to the next. It's, it's that cyclical type of thing where the creativity and the learning happen, um, both parallel, but also the cyclical, the cyclical fashion of, yeah. um, of how we learn just in general. And so mm -hmm. as teachers and, and we all get this too, the, and I've said this too, the more I've let go of that idea that I have to be in control all the time, the better off my classes have gone. Mm -hmm. when it really and I didn't grasp that as a younger teacher this whole idea of a student-centered learning I was like how can it ever be student-centered it's my classroom and I have to be in control and I have the objectives <laughs> and I hold power um, <laughs> that was a foreign concept to me about what student center actually looked like until it started happening where mm -hmm. not that it wasn't student-centered before but where it was more the students I give them the guide and I give them the idea and then I just let it be yeah, you know, just let them go. And um, again, always parameters, always coach them along, always the feedback. But when you allow them to actually take control, that leads back to why the student expectations are where they are. There's not a lot of classroom management issues because they know the expectations. Um, a lot more collaborative and real world, real life things happening. Um, and then more and more success and quicker success. That's the other thing is the efficiency of what we do. What used to take mm -hmm. us six class days to do, we're doing those same exact projects in three days because I've learned what not to do. And when the kids trust me, this is what you do not want to do. And here's why. Or they try to pull the thing of, well, I'm not going to quite be done. And I'm like, good try. Uh -uh. <laughs> like I know how long <laughs> this takes. Um <laughs> Unless they're being more creative and then there's days we walk in yeah. and literally I will have 15 of the 17 faces say, miss, there is no way I'm getting this handed in today. And I'm like, all right, convince me. And <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And it's not because they weren't using their time. It's legitimately yeah. they've tried to level up or they're adding in other layers mm -hmm. to their projects. Um, or they went down the digital rabbit hole of like Photoshop where they found something else cool they could add. Oh, <laughs> you know, yes. they just, like, I've been there. At some, at some point, just be done. Like it's not going to be perfect and it's perfect enough and you're going to get a really good grade and you can be super proud of it and you really can't do anything better, but please just be done. You know, um, there's mm -hmm. also that we have to sometimes put up a stop sign. Yes, we have to put a bookmark in eventually. <laughs> 
Yes. That's a good one. I like that. Yeah. But <laughs> it's like me and talking Shanda stop saying you're done. No. <laughs> but that was perfect. I'm so glad I asked that question. And yes, you, I, every time I, I speak to you, I feel like my whole cup is filled because you always just leave you hopefully instill like a lot of inspiration in me, but also in our fellow teachers too. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause everybody is just working their tails off and doing a really good job. And as fast as all the digital world, you know, is progressing, I feel like too, we sometimes try to keep up with the kids when that's not necessary, you know, again, be the launch pad and then let them be and see what they do and guide them and give them the feedback with it. Um, but it's okay just to be two steps ahead of them sometimes too. Yeah. You know, that's, that's fine too. And, and let that happen. Um, be, I know it's the season of Thanksgiving right now, but just the, the idea of the gratitude of accepting the kids knowledge and their mm -hmm. creativity and then feeding off of that is pretty huge. Yes. Oh, yes, Shanda, always speaking. I want to get tattooed. Uh, creativity leads to learning. And I feel like I need to get that, like, or just put on a wall or something. Yeah. <laughs> <I> ink permanent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.